Let's take a look at how to do this work and machines reinforcement worksheet. Number one, a box is pushed 40 meters by a mover. The amount of work done was 2,240 joules. How much force was exerted on the box? First, you need to find what you have been given. A box is pushed 40 meters by a mover. Meters, that's distance. The amount of work done was 2,240 joules. They told you that was the work. Also, it's in joules, and remember you work for gold and joules, which will help you remember that. How much force was exerted? So we want to find the force. Now you need to find a formula with work, force, and distance. Here it is. Work equals force times the change in the distance. This delta change in just means that you might have to subtract if they give you two numbers or they might just hand it to you. The work equals force times distance. Now, they've got you solving for force, so let's put this in a triangle. Force and distance are multiplied. Therefore, side by side multiplied, they go on the bottom. Force times distance. Work goes in the leftover blank. Now, we're solving for force, cover up force, and it's work divided by distance. Put your work on top, 2,240, divided by your distance, 40, do your math, and get an answer. By the way, this is the only work you have to show. The rest of this work is optional. Well, of course, show your answer. On your answer, you need to put a unit. So what unit goes with force? Oh yeah, force newtons, fig newtons. Okay, so newtons are the unit of force. Number two, a person expended 500 newtons to move a full wheelbarrow 35 meters. How much work was done? Yes, it is a wheelbarrow, even though everybody says wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow is the correct spelling and the correct pronunciation, even though nobody says it that way. A person expended 500 newtons. Oh yeah, newtons, force newtons, fig newtons, force. To move a full wheelbarrow, 35 meters. Meters, distance. How much work was done? Find the work. So once again, we need a formula with force, distance, and work which is this same formula right here. You go ahead and finish number two. Number three, a carpenter uses a crowbar to remove the top of a box. The top has a resistance of 600 newtons. The carpenter applies an input force of 200 newtons. What is the mechanical advantage of the crowbar? So on our reference table, we actually have two mechanical advantages, ideal mechanical advantage and actual mechanical advantage. How are you supposed to know which one to use? Well, what were you given? In this problem, we were given newtons. Newtons is a unit of force. Therefore, we're going to use the actual mechanical advantage, which uses force, rather than the ideal, which uses distance. Force of resistance over force of effort. Now, we've got to figure out which one is the resistance and which one is the effort. You always put in the effort. You're the one that pushes and pulls and that kind of thing. So the carpenter applied an in, oh good, they even told you input force, which is your effort force. So this is your force of effort. Now the top, the lid of the box, has a resistance of 600. Resistance, there you go, force of resistance. And now, plug those two numbers into the formula and give me your answer. You only have to show the numbers and whether you multiply it or divide. You don't have to show all of this unless you just want to. Your answer will not have a unit. The reason is this force is in newtons and this force is in newtons. Newtons divided by newtons cancels. So there is no unit on a mechanical advantage. In fact, the meaning of the mechanical advantage is how many times easier is it to do the work. 
So if you have a mechanical advantage of five, that means it's five times easier to do the work. Number four, the carpenter in problem number three does 1,250 joules of work in using a crowbar to open the box. 50 joules is spent in overcoming friction, so the work actually used to open the box is 1,200 joules. What is the efficiency of the crowbar he used? The formula for efficiency is found here on your reference table. It is the work output over the work input times 100. So now we have to figure out what's the output and what's the input. The carpenter does this much work when he uses the crowbar. Therefore, you always put in the work. You are the effort force. Input and effort are the same thing. So that value goes on the bottom. Next, which one is the work output? 50 joules overcomes friction and 1,200 joules actually does the work to open the box. Therefore, the work output to, to actually do the work of opening the box is 1,200. That goes on top, 1,250 on the bottom. What are we forgetting? There's one more step that people often leave out, and that's times 100. Now do your math. Take this number, divide it by this number, times 100, and you will have your answer. But what units do we have? This was joules and this was joules. Joules divided by joules cancels, and there is no unit. But then you multiply times 100, which turns it into a percent. So please put a percent sign beside your answer. Number five. The carpenter uses 280 newtons of force to open the box a distance of 0 0.05 meters in two seconds. How much power did the carpenter have? Let's see what we've been given. The carpenter uses 280 newtons of force. So that's force. To open the box a distance of 0 .5, 0 0.05 meters distance in two seconds, that's your time. How much power? So we're looking for power. Now the formula for power is work divided by time. But wait a minute. We have time, but we weren't given work. So now what? Well, is there a formula with force and distance? Yes, there is. Work equals force times distance. So, power is work per time, and work is force times distance. So first we'll have to use this formula, then we'll go back and use this formula. Work equals force times distance. We were given the force, 280, times the distance, 0 0.05, and that gives us the work. Then work divided by time. Take your work, divide it by your time of two seconds, do your math, and that will give you your power. Now, what unit is power in? Ah, power is in watts. Just think of a light bulb. A light bulb provides the power uh, to light up your house. And so that might help you remember that power is in watts. Number six, what are two ways that machines make work easier? Well, remember your formula, work equals force times distance. So, if the force is lower, that's how you make the work easier, as you lower the force, and the work is the same, therefore the distance has to increase. A pulley works because you pull a lot more string than the distance the weight actually rises. So you put in a long distance with a little force, you get out a short distance with a much bigger force. So one way a machine makes work easier is that it increases the input distance so that the input force can decrease. The second way a machine makes work easier is by changing the direction. For example, with a lever, you can push down and the weight goes up. Or with a pulley, you can pull down and the weight goes up. Number seven, how does a screwdriver used to remove the lid of a paint can change the direction of the force? Let's pretend this is my paint can and this is my screwdriver, and I'm trying to pry open the lid. Well, 
which direction are you pushing or pulling? And which direction is the lid going? Ah, so you push down and the lid comes up. 